you very much, sir. May I request uh, Shri Miotia? May I request Pankaj Patel ji? May I request Rashi Shah ji? Kindly come on to the dais, please. Thank you very much, sir. As, as all of you are well aware, Shri Anand Sharma was one of the strongest supporters for industry and for business. And he was a very close friend of Vicky and he did. We were able to get a lot of things done under his guidance and went to many places with him where we could fly the Indian flag. Thank you very much, sir, for all that support. We will uh, continue with it uh, as, as we uh, move ahead. Uh, business uh, needs this kind of support from people like you. May I request from Sri Yuthiaji, uh, President, to kindly give a green certificate to Shri Anand Sharma. Thank him and welcome him to be with us. May I request Shri Miyotia to say a few words?
discussing, as I understand, economic reforms. And in the inaugural plenary, the finance minister would have given a big list of the remarkable achievements that have taken place, the transformation of India as a superpower. For the first time, people recognizing the great republic of India, the map of the world, and also acknowledging and saluting that this country has suddenly found wisdom, which as a whole civilization, it lacked until 2014. <coughs> I have no complaints. and we wish them good luck. That is the strength of Indian democracy. But reforms in this country have been ongoing since the 50s. How we look at reform, economic reform, to my mind, a holistic view is important. Captains of industry, entrepreneurs, you are first citizens of the republic and after that each one of us engaged in our own vocation. Therefore reforms have to be social reforms, economic reforms, administrative reforms, judicial reforms, legislative reforms. Reform must not be viewed in isolation or connected merely to one development and one year. There was a time when India was not ready and people have said that the decade of the 50s and the 60s were wasted. I can only sympathize. I can only sympathize with those who are less informed of history of our own country. Because when we became independent, India was a nation of approximately 350 million people. It was a painful birth, the partition of India, the bloodbath, the forced migration of tens of millions of people. India's own national capital was in siege, under siege. We hardly had industries. Less than 5% of the Indians could be termed as literate. There was no infrastructure, no connectivity. We didn't have institutions. We our sons and daughters could be educated well to become global leaders. 
let us not forget those who gave us independence and let's not insult the memory of the former prime ministers beginning with illustrious Jawaharlal Nehru who is the builder the architect of modern India let us also not forget that he was given this responsibility when the father of the nation was assassinated soon after India's independence but what he left he left a strong country, institutions of excellence, Indian Institute of Science, Space Science, Nuclear Science Management, ITIs, National Institute of Design, you name it, and it was Nehru. He knew that the private capital was not available. State had to invest, and that's how the public sector enterprises came up. He chose the path of mixed economy. The state supported equally private capital to be invested for India's development, for job creation. But you'll agree with me that for a long time this country didn't have the resources for the private sector to go to the backyards to the rural areas where there was darkness and in a country which was impoverished because of centuries of subjugation where people were humiliated and not given the right to make their own decisions. The narrative has to be honest. The narrative cannot be disconnected from our own history. The moment we do it, by claiming that for the first time things are happening, I feel sad, I don't feel angry. <coughs> I may have differences with the present Prime Minister, his policies and the government. And they naturally had huge differences with us. But we have not made the narrative personal and bitter. Don't forget the narrative against the former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, for years. Don't forget the insults heaped on a man of great intellect and integrity. And don't also forget what happened when he was Finance Minister in 1991 the great economic reforms, which actually catapulted India on the global stage, where you all captains of industry had the self-confidence to step out, to invest in other countries, and to compete with others. Today, whether it's the manufacturing sector, development and dissemination of higher technologies, research, and the services sector, particularly the information technology and the communication. These didn't come, my dear friends, overnight. Let me tell you something. <coughs> Who started the telephone revolution? There was a time when you could not even speak to your neighbor. You both maybe had your telephone, but that bad was the connectivity. You remember the old black phone with that dial, the struggle and the fingers will be hurt. It was Indira Gandhi, even before Rajiv. It was she who had called in Sankar. Then Rajiv Gandhi set up the technology issues. My dear friends, I was in Parliament very young. I think I'm still. <laughs> but I can't forget the huge national campaign against computers. That Rajiv Gandhi will destroy the future of our children. Jobs will be lost. Banks will only have computers, no human beings. And it was said by those who are talking today of making India cashless, which they have done. 
and there was a national agitation against te mobile telephony, against computerization. There was a Bharat ban for three days. Banks were on strike. It was not the communists alone, but the right and the left and the center, they all joined. They said, this communist, this prime minister, where is it taking the country? How many of you remember, by the turn of the century, when the world was scared, a world which was interconnected by technology, when the information and capital flowed fast from one continent to another with the press of a button, that there is a millennium bug. I am not a technology expert. Many of you will be. The world looked towards which country? India. Indian professionals were much sought after. They went to America, they went to England, they went, and even Germany gave 20,000 visas. Though our professionals were English speaking professionals, because they said only Indians can fix this naturally. The land of Aryabhat and Bhaskar, a country which gave zero to the world. The talent of its people, our sons and daughters, was acknowledged and applauded and celebrated at the turn of the century. Friends from the media, you people don't cover us. We know. <laughs> because the moment we see any television, India has been, I was IMB minister briefly, 700 plus channels. Now there are more than a thousand. From all those channels, only barely bar and one face comes out. Good. But I tell you, young people in the media, you must ponder, reflect, because a balance in the narrative is absolutely important. In a democracy, unless and until you have good governance and you have an opposition which is both assertive but also responsible and mature. Indian democracy will be in danger. There's an old Sanskrit shanoka. I'm forgetting the full part, but it is Naikam Chakra Bhagavad. That even the chariot of the gods cannot move on one wheel, you need two wheels. That's what we are. Harshriyotya was saying about the experience that we are having a good view from the other side, yes. But we were in opposition. Yeah. And they were in government until the people of India brought us back in 2004. We were there for 10 years. We had perhaps many achievements to our credit, maybe many shortcomings. And one of the great shortcomings was that we didn't have a Prime Minister who was his own propagandist, who was packaging and marketing himself. Dr. Mugol Singh couldn't do it. That was a failure on our part. We could not tell the people what was given to India. But let me tell you now. Can you ignore the fact that from 480 billion dollars of GDP, we left 2.1 trillion dollar of GDP. We more than quadrupled in one decade, with India becoming the first country in the world since the first industrial revolution to quadruple the GDP in 10 years. America, after United Kingdom, England, the first revolution and the second took 12 years even to double the GDP. Japan became the first country and South Korea to do it within a decade. China tripled it. We quadrupled it. How can one forget this? How can we forget that we left India's trade and I was the economy minister 
It was $80 billion of exports, or less than that. We left post-financial crisis and economic crisis only merchandise export of $323 billion US dollars. And I wish and pray that those who are talking of galloping economy to an economy which is actually gasping and you don't know, will be able to achieve that mark before the next year of election. I wish and pray. Because I'm an Indian first, I don't want my country's economy to be hurt. I don't want us to lose our market share in the global <laughs> markets. But our two-way trade in merchandise and services was 1.1 trillion US dollars. Was that or not? Did we not lift 130 million Indians out of poverty net? Did we not triple India's national income? What is being built is built on those strong foundations. And I'm constrained and compelled to recall all this. We gave policies. <coughs> Let's not forget that. Who brought the Right to Information Act? Who brought the Prevention of Money Laundering Act? Who brought the Whistleblowers Bill? And today we are being told that the previous government did not take any initiative to fight black money. What is black money? I will definitely talk about it. But let me say one thing. Industry leaders have been meeting me, meeting my colleague leaders, senior leaders in the party. I have, from day one, said that we are the original authors of the economic reforms and financial reforms. The Indian National Congress will never come in the way when it comes to taking forward India's reform agenda. Now, I know you, you people cannot talk, but some of you may. But let me tell you one thing. For seven years, the insurance bill could not be passed by Indian Parliament. Because those who had the wisdom and sitting on that side where I am sitting now said it is bad for the country. It opened the doors to multinationals. And that was a simple thing, the FDI to be permitted and raising the bar. For seven years, the GST was not passed. The insolvency and bankruptcy bills were not passed. Today they are passed. You have not given us the credit that we are the authors of everything which was stalled because of an irresponsible opposition which is claiming the credit today for what we started and made it possible as a responsible opposition party. If we had not decided, neither GST bill nor insurance nor insolvency would have been passed. Will you give us credit and please acknowledge honestly that it is unfair to blame those who have been committed and have never wavered. But nobody talks that this is what happened. And it has happened today because of us. Please do not always heap accusations, allegations and insults. We all are Indians. This is our country, irrespective of where we are, in opposition or in government. Nothing remains frozen, my dear friends. Message to those who forget us. <laughs> Things will change. <laughs> but let me say one thing. Finance Minister this morning said that there's a good friend of mine, the one person who has wisdom and understanding. In a government there is otherwise a severe drought. <laughs> but he's talked of reforms, bold reforms and what's happening to the global economy. I don't want to bore you. You all are educated. You read. And I hope you do not watch too much of television because nothing much comes out of that. But when it comes
comes to decision. What is a bold decision? I may think it's bold, it will be bold on my part at my age if I try to jump from a 30 feet high dice. I will end up breaking my bones. Or I'll fall on somebody, I will end up hurting the person on whom I fall. This is a fundamental question. So, decisions have first to be wise decisions, well thought decisions. Decisions must be made which serve the common good. Decisions must only be made considering what father of the nation said, the poorest of the poor. You cannot have economic reforms and growth without economic justice, social justice. In a country where you still have 400 million people who are poor, a country which has huge inequalities, you have wealthy people who can be there on the same high table with the wealthiest of the world. You know, we have more poor people than in Africa. We have more people who suffer from tuberculosis. That's why the midday meal schemes have been there in the governments for long. And guess who started the midday meal scheme? Indira Gandhi. Who made India the nuclear power? Indira Gandhi. India became the sixth nuclear power. India became the fifth military power. We are celebrating a centenary. But what was said about Indira Gandhi yesterday, the day when she liberated Bangladesh and after the Second World War, there was the biggest surrender of a professional army when India took 93,000 prisoners of war. Instead of remembering that leadership and a leader who was referred to by none other than Atul Bihari Bajpayee, That actually shocked me. What a day chosen to insult the memory of one of the tallest leaders in the world of a time. But we leave wisdom or lack of it to those who embrace it. But at the same time, harsh effort to demonetize. Common violence it is used, but this is not demonetization. It is invalidating your currency. You have withdrawn the validity of 500 rupees and 1,000 rupees denomination currency notes. 86% to be precise, 86.4. 15 lakh crores out of 17 lakh crores in circulation were withdrawn in one stroke. And let me tell you, the government has no legal right on its own through an executive order to demonetize. That would mean extinguishing the currency for which the law has to be passed by the parliament, not in seven race goes round. No. So that has happened. And what have we achieved? Why it was done? From day one we said, any step taken against black money, we are for it. None of you will doubt when Anand Sharma says it. Yes. But what is black money? I asked you a little while ago. Cash in circle. 86% of your currency was black money. Your money, my money, money in bank accounts, housewives, farmers. Because Indian economy is based on cash transactions. Now over 90%, 95%. You factory owners, small enterprises, you withdraw money from your own banks to pay your factory work. Farmer has to pay the farm labor in cash. Farmer gets paid by Aratyas in the, in the Mandis for the crop in cash. Farmer buys seeds, fertilizer in cash. But the same farmers, the same poor people, who may be outside your tax net, as is said, are not outside. 
Because India has the highest indirect tax in the world. Highest. They buy a scooter, they buy a tractor, they buy something. These are embedded tax duties. That is all of them. It gets caught every transaction. So this money, it is foolish to say that the money with the people of this country, hard-earned money of our farmers, our salaried employees, our entrepreneurs, our retailers, hawkers, coolies, poor people, was black money. There cannot be a greater insult to the people of this country by turning that currency which has been invalidated as black money. And I challenge anybody, particularly in the government, and that's why Prime Minister did not come to our house to debate with us. To say that we did not want to debate is false. You know, we brought that adjournment motion and I started the debate. Who did not come? Those who are saying we are running away from the debate. Thank God that day this television channel showed my face. Otherwise, it would have been no, only one person wants a debate and the others are running away. Now, to the world, what has the message is gone? That you're incompetent. Implementation has been a disaster. Prime Minister said, give me one week. Then he said, give me 15 days. Now he's running away from 15 days. Good luck to you all and to me too. But the point is, to the world, the image was given that India's economy, great economy, fastest growing economy, was based on black money, crime money, counterfeit money. Is, was that the case? Four reasons were given, my dear friends, to fight terrorism, to fight black money. Who will say no to this? None of us. Counterfeit currency had become a threat to India. And against corruption. Now what has happened? First of all, within days, terrorists in Kashmir were caught with newly printed 2,000 rupee notes. Second one wisdom I don't have, please educate me. That you withdraw 500 rupee note that black money is to be caught and introduce 2,000 rupee note which nobody can use in the market. Under Sendanchen, you have huge transactions. My dear friend, you can't buy your groceries, milk, eggs, vegetables, carrying that note. Neither the sabzi wala will accept it. That no retailer will accept it. And I believe that it is being undersold now, shortchanged, for 1800 rupees. If you take 2000 rupee known, people say 1800 that you can take. This is a reality. But okay, this happened. But the currency was not printed. So currency is not there. At the same time, government had said, and finance ministry, you should have asked, but you people don't ask that he informed the parliament in August, in writing. And now internet is there, at least daily as the coverage Prime Minister thinks the entire India has great internet connectivity. But we were told that the counterfeit currency is 0.02% of the total currency in circulation. 0.02. But the currency had to be destroyed because terrorists had it. What about citizens terrorists? And what is 0 0.02? There's an old saying, Oont ke is jira. What is 0 0.02 for which you do this? Third is, black money will go. 15 lakh crores withdrawn, 13 lakh crores are back in the banks. Government doesn't know. Have you ever seen 57 notifications of the Reserve Bank of India. It's like somebody not able to decide for days and days what to wear and what to eat. Narrative is getting changed on a daily basis, quarterly basis. There's a joke that you go to toilet and you shout from inside, 
Is there a new RBI circular, new finance ministry, notification? This has been happening. Count the number of days, but you realize that the notification and circulars are both at twice the number of days. There is a great plan. Clarity. God help us if this is the clarity of mind. And corruption destroyed. Overnight in India, overnight, a national project has been launched for money corruption and money laundering that's happily going on. Who are the people? Can I ask the question? Who people are standing for days and days? 111 people have died in queues. ATMs are running dry. Even in parliament, I'm not saying that we should get it, but even in parliament, we don't get about 24,000. Russian money. But tens of ten crores, 100 crores, 70 crores are being found here, there, everywhere. That's a grand management. If this is called a fight against black money, it is a fight against India's economy. There is a financial anarchy in India today. India is in an economic shutdown mode. Go to the villages. There are 6 lakh 50,000 villages in India. How many bank branches do we have in India? Not even one and a half lakhs. You have a little over 2 lakh ATMs. 40% don't work. 90% have not been recalibrated for this note which nobody wants 2,000 rupees. So what have we achieved? What we have achieved and which worries me. Besides selling the reputation of India globally, we have destroyed people's trust in the formidable reputation of the Reserve Bank of India stands battered today. It will take a long time to restore the same reputation and the same trust which people don't have. These are the harsh realities. From the Prime Minister's state of Gujarat, Morbi, you start from there, that's the ceramic capital. 400,000 jobs have been lost only in Morbi. What about Surat, textile, diamond, cutting, polishing? Go to Panipat, go to Ludhiana. What has happened to the leather industry? What has happened in Tripur? What has happened in Varanasi? What has happened to the weavers? All of these are black marketeers. These are poor people who have lost their daily wages or daily income. There are two things, daily wage and daily income. Daily income earners are your head load, these coolies, halals, hawkers, all those who get the wages, weekly wages and daily. Two, I call triple. And I can name, I, I, I have been in touch with people because I know each one by name. All the manufacturing and export councils were with me and God has been kind so far, the memory is good, so I know whom to talk to here in India. And they told me, in third, was Sakti Vinit, that's a export-oriented unit, so those where the orders are doing fine. But the weekly wages stand destroyed, and 40% of the production is done. Why industry is not bringing out a white paper? Because I'm asking. Uh, our Honorable Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi, because he's so knowledgeable, he had thought this decision Then why this mismanagement? Who will print our currency? It's easy to say, go oh, cashless, you are made in India. Cashless rich and cardless poor. That is what India is today. How will you give hope back? How will you put this economy back on track? How will you revive growth? How will you revive jobs? There was a government which came with the promise of creating two crore jobs for the benefit of some foreign friends, 
20 million jobs a year. You should have been 50 million. It's two and a half years. But the fact is, instead of getting 50 million jobs, we have lost 14.8 million jobs. I have not factored in the job losses of the last 37 days. That would run into millions and maybe it will climb up to tens of millions. You know, why the wrong statements are being made? Citizens must be told the truth. 2300 crores of currency notes were withdrawn illegally. Citizens have been denied access to their own money in their bank deposit accounts. You can withdraw 2,000, you can withdraw 4,000. I am the Lord and Master Sarkar, the my bab. You want your daughter to be married? Two and a half lakh rupees. Why? And then 10 forms. Girls' parents, Photograph, band numbers, boys' parents, bridegroom's parents, pan number of the florist who will make the floral arrangement, pan number of the tent wala, pan, pan number of the alwai. And if they don't have, you have to give an affidavit why they don't have the mandi wala. Hare? And then you say hey, these are great decisions and a transformation. God help. That's all what I can say and give wisdom to those who know me. We expect that those who are elected with trust and hope deliver on their promises instead of working overtime, which was a favorite pastime of Prime Minister Narendra Modi when in opposition. He led the Murcha against me on FDI. He led the Murcha against GST. It didn't he? Then he was cursing and abusing us all the time. Again. My message to Prime Minister is stop insulting the former Prime Ministers. From Nehru to Bajpayee to Sardar Manmohan Singh to Indira Gandhi. It's a long list. When you insult, you don't insult only Nehru and Indira Gandhi because you're against them. You insult Lal Bahadur Shastri. You insult that Bharati Desai who did the disastrous demonetization again, 78. India's growth plummeted to minus 5.2 the next year. Don't forget history. So my message is, for heaven's sake, change this mindset. Get some good counseling. Don't make a fool of the people by saying that I'm a fakir. All Indians would like to be such a fakir. I don't have the, I marvel, I, the, I don't have that kind of wardrobe. I don't, I can't afford it. <laughs> but I will not call myself a fakir. I will only say that we are public servants. We must serve the people. We must understand their pain. We must have the dignity and correctness of this course, we must also have humility. We all are fallible. We all can make mistakes. I may have made many. I will not claim that we were perfect or I am perfect. The day I will say it, my real well wishers will get worried that I have lost my sense of balance.
ही साथ उन्होंने इंदिरा जी के वक्तव्य को भी एक कोट किया था कि उन्होंने कहा कि क्या हम जब उनको सजेशन दिया गया कि डिमोनिटाइजेशन लाने की जरूरत है तो उन्होंने कहा कि क्या हमें आगे चुनाव नहीं लड़ने हैं तो मेरा सवाल सिर्फ इतना है कि इन तथ्यों में कितनी और क्या सच्चाई है या इस बार फिर से उन्होंने तथ्यों के साथ मैं बताता हूँ जी मैं बताता हूँ वो तो खैर आतन मजबूरी है उन्नीस में यानी आज से पैंतालीस बरस पहले छियालीस बरस हो जाएंगे मेरी उम्र अब सत्रह साल थी नरेंद्र मोदी उन्नीस बीस बरस के थे अगर उम्र सही लिखा है इतना इतना ही फर्क है उनको ये ज्ञान मैं तो कांग्रेस में था तब भी और इतना जानकारी कि इंदिरा गांधी ने उन्नीस में क्या कहा था ऐसे व्यक्ति को तो मैं दाप दे उन्होंने एक किताब का जिक्र किया कि ऐसा है कि हर तरह के लोग होते हैं अब आज राजीव जी नहीं रहे इंदिरा जी नहीं रही मेरा सौभाग्य था मैं दोनों को जाना पंडित जी को तो नहीं छोटे थे आजादी के बाद पैदा हुए देखा जरूर था हमारे पिता जानते थे पर मैं कहूं कि राजीव गांधी एक प्रधानमंत्री के रूप में अपने कमरे में बैठ के क्या कहते थे अपने वित्त मंत्री को तो मुझसे बढ़ के मूरख कोई नहीं होगा हम कौन प्रधानमंत्री हम कैबिनेट मिनिस्टर्स होते हुए भी आप क्या दूसरे मंत्री के ओएसडी को या पर्सनल असिस्टेंट को बुला के उसके सामने बात करोगे मेरा प्रश्न नरेंद्र मोदी जी से सीधा है उन्होंने बोल बोले की किताब का जिक्र किया माधव गौड़ भोले बाद में भारत के गृह सचिव थे पर उन्नीस में वो स्पेशल असिस्टेंट थे भारत के वित्त मंत्री यशवंतराव चौहान के मुझे नहीं लगता कि इंदिरा गांधी पी को और असिस्टेंट्स को मीटिंग में बुलाती थी फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर के साथ कोई आदमी दुनिया से चला जाए जो मर्जी किताब लिख लोगों को शौक है अच्छी सच्चाई लिखते हैं कुछ फिक्शन लिखते हैं पूछने किससे जाओगे आप कहोगे यशवंतराव चौहान तो चले गए इंदिरा जी चले गए बात उन दोनों के बीच में तीसरा आदमी आपको ज्ञान दे रहा है और चौथा प्रवचन दे रहा है ये सच है कल आप एक चीज और कह दो जो वांचू कमेटी का प्रधानमंत्री ने कल जिक्र किया वांचू कमेटी रिकमेंडेशन वर एक्सेप्टेड बाई इंदिरा गांधी इट्स अ बेटर फैक्ट एंड रिकॉर्ड के बारे में जरा चर्चा है कि जो डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह के टाइम में ग्रोथ हुई उसमें जॉब्स एडिक्वेट ट्रेड नहीं हुए मैं ये डेटा नेट पे देखना चाहूँगा पर यदि आपके पास में कुछ हो तो जरा बताएं जी मौजूदा सरकार ने कृपा की है कि एक रिपोर्ट दबाई गई जिस तरह मीडिया हमारी सारी खबर दबा देता है उसमें ये आया है कि द डेकेट ऑफ टू टू थाउजेंड सबसे ज्यादा मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स हिंदुस्तान में कायम हुए ये पिछले साल अगस्त महीने के अंदर ये रिपोर्ट सरकार की तरफ से जारी की गई है आप अपना नाम परिचय दे दें मैं अवश्य आज ही आपके पास पहुंचा देता हूं ताकि ये नेट का घपला खत्म हो सरकार की किसी बात पे तो हम तो हर बात पे यकीन करना चाहिए पर इस बात पर तो यकीन कर लो इन्होंने ही कहा पर आज कितनी टूट गई जरा नेट पर वो भी
that is 549 million Indians, 55 crores. Of the much height Jandhan account, 25 crore. And 13 crore were opened during the tenure of Chiri Mukherjee and Beach Account. Those are called the no friends account. Then I'm sitting here, a banker, to understand what I'm talking. These are called originally basic bank deposit accounts. So 38 crores, out of which 80% have this much of balance. Five rupees, zero. Banks have now put 150 rupees, 500 rupees, which became a scandal that wow, come, this money is going there. Now a lot of money is going there because that money is being removed. So who is putting where? That's a separate question. But when 80 crore people don't have bank accounts, who will give them a credit card, debit card? Second question. 60% of the villages and small kasbas don't have any bank branch, don't have any ATM, nothing. Three. Will you make your farmer cashless, who comes with his vegetables, fruits, wheat, paddy? Now they have to carry in their, as I said in parliament, in their dhoti, lungi, whatever they wear, they will have to tie a swipe card machine or something. Number four, read the financial inclusion report of the World Bank. Up to now, only 11% Indians do check transactions. This is not my saying. What is Prime Minister's popular campaign? Toilet banana, swastar. So the country where the second decade of the 21st century, you are fighting to build toilets, where in nation's capital, you don't have sewage, sewage disposal. You don't have portable drinking water or safe drinking water. I'm talking of big cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore. This is a reality. For heaven's sake, first create the infrastructure. 60% of India lives in darkness. The, can, are we saying there is uninterrupted power supply? Are we saying that you have an internet connectivity which has surpassed America, France, or United Kingdom, or Russia. 55% of transactions in America are cash transactions even today. How will you make India cashless? You have made India cashless by illegally denying people access. Please read the Supreme Court decision on the matter. It will go to the Constitution bench. Read Article 14. Article 19 of the Court. These are fundamental rights. And Article 24. Citizens cannot be denied their money. And Article 300A, which makes it absolutely clear that you cannot be denied, nobody shall be deprived of his property. This is the Constitution. So, what is the legality? What has happened in India is unethical unprincipled. And last thing on this cashless business, I've given you the numbers, I've given you the facts. Now Prime Minister should also tell us, because after 50 days everything will be all right. How many hours he needs to make India cashless so that 130 crore people get swipe cards, debit card. And your debit card data was recently hacked, compromised. Do you know, day before yesterday, pay time has been hacked. You know about it? You, do you also know who owns majority shareholding of pay time? Because Prime Minister has become actually a brand ambassador of pay time. Alibaba, the Chinese. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. We'll just take two more questions. Yes. What do you say? Do we implement it? Yes. We have done our job. If I was the finance minister, we would have implemented it. Now the government has to do it. We passed the constitution on that. Yes, that's the last question.
my query is that how do you analyze the impact of this demoralization on the agrarian system and how it is going to affect agriculture as a means of surviving the rural areas? You see, my worry is that uh, the food production which we became self-reliant and did not remain import dependent was achieved through green revolution pushed, pushed firmly by environment. We were the largest <laughs> agri-commodity exporters in the world until 2014. Number one rice exporter, number two wheat exporter, then I can reel off the numbers. 43, 44 billion dollars was India's agri exports as of 2013, 14. It has plummeted to 22, exactly half. So this is going to affect the yield. It has, you see this decision has come at the peak of the sowing season and cooperative banks were not allowed access to money. So the farmers did not get That's one issue. Now I am told that farmers in large parts of India have used their own seed. Now what is own seed? They keep part of their own crop, like wheat. This is the season for mustard and wheat. But that leads to much lower yield per acre, up to 35 months a month in a hectare would go down. Last year, the farmers did not get the minimum support price, adequate price. There is an agrarian dress, a distress which is already there. Government's buffer stocks have sharply fallen. This was also the period when farmers were to get their payments for the Kharif crop in cash. They have not got the money. Even if they got it somewhere deposited in the bank, they cannot withdraw it. Three, four days ago, by stealth, government did another thing. They brought in a notification. When we were exporting wheat and rice, which I told you, we had imposed a 25% import duty for importing wheat. And we were clear, I was Commerce Minister, that we will not allow, we will export, we will not import, because we have enough. So our farmers were benefited. Now, last year they reduced it from 25 to 10. And this week they reduced it to zero. Yesterday, when we met the Prime Minister, I personally told him that this can, there cannot be more disastrous a decision to destroy it by allowing import of wheat. So one thing, you connect the dots when it happened, the transition period between the Kharif and the Rabi, how it has affected the sowing, how it will affect the yield, the output, and on top of that, free import from a self-reliant India, import-dependent India achievement. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, sir. Wonderful to have you, and thank you really for supporting Fiki all the time. Thank you very much. Uh, you know that we'll now be taking the lunch break, uh, and as many of you are aware, there's also the Gandhi exhibition on the first floor of this same Parvasi Bharti Kendra. I would urge upon you to go and have a look at that. It's rather beautiful. Do finish your lunch and come back. Bye. 1, 5, 1, 10, because we will start on time. I'm sorry, uh, do come back by uh, 3, by around 3 or 3, 5, because we will start at uh, 3.15, the, the next session where Shri Jain Sanandi is uh, joining us. Thanks, sir.